I'm Bert with HVAC School <laughs> and I'm doing a video today and it's a good one so let's get started there's a camera waiting for me outside what are the chances of that hey what are the chances You come with me too. You know, I've always been a little camera shy. So this is a piston system here and it's low on refrigerant. So what I'm going to do is show you how to add charge and set our target superheat. And I'm going to use the Joblink Field Piece Probe. This is a probe kit right here. And um, the Joblink app has a superheat calculator. I'm going to show you how to set our superheat with these. Let's do this. One of the cool things about this kit is the uh, all four probes have the indicator here that you could switch. So high, low side, switch that. And these pressure probes are nice and easy to hook up. We got the 45 degree angle. And then we got our two temp clamps. One of the cool features about these temp clamps is they have rapid rail sensing. So as soon as you got a clean connection, you're gonna get an instant temperature reading. And our two psychrometers come with the kit. We're gonna take those inside and put it right in return. That's how we're gonna get our wet bulb. Calculating the superheat. Both of these psychrometers come with induct probe and a magnet. You want to make sure you set that right in the return airflow. And the spy. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our app. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is enter our system information, fixed metering device, R22 refrigerant, outdoor temperature, outdoor temperature 78. And then we can calculate our target superheat. So here's our readings in real time. We got our return and supply, dry bulb, wet bulb. And that's from the psychrometers, which are inside right now. One of the great things about these probes is their strong wireless signal strength. Uh, you can reach up to 350 feet before you lose connection with your mobile device. And I've had them for about a month now without problems, so that's good. This system looks pretty clearly low on refrigerant. Let's read the diagnostics from the app. Actual superheat is above the target superheat, which indicates an undercharge. Add refrigerant. So that what we're going to do. All right, here's my charging setup. Got my refrigerant take here and scale, and I'm going to be adding in vapor. If you got mixed refrigerant, you want to add in liquid. Here's my charging tee down here, and then a ball valve uh, for adding and stopping. So this charging tee is something I got off of TrueTechTools.com, and it's called a charging tee on there. And it's the easiest setup uh, I've found for adding charge through the wireless probes. Uh, you can also use, uh, most of us have, a valve core tool remover 
and you can also use that. It's just a little more work because you gotta pull out the core and put it back in when you're done. Okay, right now what I need to do is actually bleed the lines. So I'm gonna open up the tank and then open this up here and actually let all the air out. And there you have it. We are ready to start adding charge. Okay, as you start adding refrigerant, um, you just wanna make sure that you're being patient and actually pacing yourself, not just dumping refrigerant in. It's far too easy to overcharge a system, to add more than you need. So you pay attention to your pressures, you watch your scale, and the closer you get to your target superheat, you slow down your process, let the system run longer and stabilize, uh, so you know exactly where you're at. So you may notice that I have a suction clamp hooked up outside. Um, so there's a few things when you're setting your target superheat that go into that consideration. Uh, one is, are you going to be flooding your compressor? Through the various uh, temperature changes outside throughout the year, uh, you don't want to get liquid, uh, zero superheat, all the way back to the compressor or you're going to be flooding it. The other side of that is, how much are you feeding into your evaporator coil? That evaporator coil is going to be most efficient when it has boiling refrigerant all the way through the coil. So if the refrigerant comes out the other side of that coil as a zero superheat, you're actually using that evaporator coil most efficiently. Um, but then you run into the danger of actually flooding your compressor, which you don't want to happen. Um, the other thing to consider is that the compressor is refrigerant cooled. So you want to be able to feed this compressor as cool of refrigerant, high volume, cool temperature refrigerant as possible within your target superheat range. Okay, system has had a chance to run and stabilize. Let's see where we're at. We now have a 40 degree saturation inside our evaporator and we have a subcooling now before we had 0.5. And it looks like our superheat is 15.6 and our target subcooling 14.7. So that's definitely within range. I like how that's dialed in. The diagnostics at the bottom read actual superheat is close to target superheat which indicates adequate refrigerant charge. That's looking good. Let's look inside at our two psychrometers. We've got our dry bulb on return, 72, wet bulb, 62, and our supply air. The diagnostic reads at the bottom. Supply air dry bulb temperature is close to the evaporator exit target. So that's great. That is how you dial in your superheat.